What we were doing is we were taking the film of the baby's back of the neck between the skin and the tissue and looking for potential space that there might be something going on genetically wrong. Chromosomally abnormal pregnancies, particularly Downs, have an excessive amount of fluid and we can quantify that. And the more fluid, the higher the risk. We are also beginning to look at the presence or absence of a nasal bone because almost 70% of cases of Down syndrome reportedly have no nasal bone at the point of the first trimester evaluation. So the advantage of an invasive procedure like amniocentesis is that it gives you a yes or a no. Right. Today what we're saying to you, we're going to identify it as whether or not you're at increased risk. It's non-invasive, does not put the pregnancy at risk, right. and we have the highest possible detection rate available to you but not 100%. Um, we made the decision that we would try and, and doing everything possible to try and have a healthy baby and that's why we're here today for the screening. Most pregnancies that measure between one and two millimeters in the amount of fluid in the neck have a good or normal outcome and that's where your measurements lie. Okay. We've sh demonstrated to you that you're not at increased risk for Down syndrome for trisomy 18, actually some other chromosome abnormalities that we don't have good prediction, but we've detected before. Mm -hmm. Not at increased risk for any one of these 12 cardiac defects, and not at increased risk for any one of 50 plus birth defects. Okay. The other aspect of any screening test is the false negative. The false negative means we look at again a group of women and we say to that group, your pregnancy looks perfectly fine to us. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, there may be among those some who have actually have affected pregnancies. How often does that happen? Well, for Down syndrome, the particular screening test you're having today will detect at least 90 and up to 98% of the cases of Down syndrome.